Oh my gosh. This I want this is one of the best I've tried. Oh my gosh. The f is this? Hey guys, Erwin Yusuf here. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time on the channel, I usually create lots of food and beverage and travel uh, videos. So if you haven't seen them yet, please go through the catalog and see if there's anything you like. Today I'm talking to you from Paris, France. I'm with my sister Solène. We're both half French, half Filipinos. We're literally here just for one day before having to take a train down tomorrow to the south to attend the wedding actually of one of my best friends. And we'll be there for about three days before coming back up to Paris for two days. So we weren't able to get too much time off but I just decided to try to make the best out of it I'm really grateful for being here I was here for four years studying and then after I left I just kept missing it because Paris is just so beautiful and there's just something special to it but every time I come back I started developing a routine in terms of what food and drink experiences I wanted to have after being abroad for so long. Paris can be complicated with restaurants and food because it's a huge city that has a huge influx of tourists. So what happens there is around these touristic sites, you'll have a lot of great restaurants, but you also have a lot of bad and overpriced restaurants that just trying to exploit the massive amount of tourists that come in that don't necessarily know where to go and that think that all French food or all French restaurants in Paris are delicious, but those people couldn't be more wrong. Paris is full of terrible restaurants, but it's also full of great restaurants and it's full of just average restaurants as well. People who live here who have done their research can find their way quite easily. Those who can't usually come out not having the greatest experiences. Today, what I wanted to focus on are my top food and drink experiences. It doesn't have to be restaurant centric, though I will give you recommendations based on the categories and the dish we try, but it's just things that are available absolutely everywhere and that I think that everyone that comes through the city should try these things individually at one point or the other. So without further ado, let's hit the streets and I'm gonna show you my top food and drink experiences in Paris. Magique, la musique et les fleurs vous enivre et captive votre cœur. Le danseur... There's absolutely nothing wrong with all Brioche Doré, uh, Monoprix, all the supermarkets, or all the places that you might find bread really easily in. They're, they're okay breads and okay ba pastries when you're in a pinch, but I think if you have time, go ahead and try to find those really artisanal. Uh, boulangerie, patisseries, the people who really kind of are at it alone because you can really feel the passion behind it. This is their lives and people are really proud of their baguette or their croissants or whatnot. So every year there's a list of the best baguette in Paris, so check that out when you can. I'll also put a list after this. But one of my favorite ones is called Le Grenier Pain. And their baguette is just so crispy. Look at that, absolutely beautiful. The only problem with these boutique artisanal uh, boulangeries or pâtisseries are that they do run out of stock because they do prepare it in small portions, I mean in small volumes. So it's really important to either check when they make their fresh batches or to come extremely early in the morning once they open. I also grabbed a brioche au chocolat here. It's almost like a croissant chocolat except it's a brioche bread with some chocolate pepites in there. Look at that. Here's some other things that you should try from the bakery. Try a croissant aux amandes. Soft, beautiful, and sweet. One of my absolute favorite things to do in Paris is to sit down at monuments and have lunch. Right now I'm about to eat the um, vanilla pecan éclair from L'Éclair de Genie, which is a, a popular chain now that's kind of like, not really a chain, but like a boutique artisanal chain that's kind of all around. Mmm. That's so good. It almost tastes like just the insides of the Kinder Bueno. Like just the insides. That's how delicious that is. Nuit de 
All right, so tarts really remind me of France and of my grandmother and two, wow, well, that's strawberry. <laughs> so good. The two tarts always remind me of when I grew up um, coming to France for, for summers and stuff. A beautiful French tarts. And then the very famous tarte au citron. This one has just a little bit, I was gonna say a little bit, a lot of meringue on top. It's slightly sweet, but this strawberry tart is out of this world. Ce refrain que le coeur Have the famous Bertillon ice cream on Lille Saint Louis. Beautiful La Durée raspberry and rose macaron. You know macaron is good when it's nice and fluffy and kind of light. And actually not too sweet, that's what I like about it. So La Durée is probably the most famous shop. It is all over Paris now. It's all over the world now. There's actually one in Manila in the Philippines as well. But there's so many other different types of shops you can go to, like Pierre Hermé just would be one off the top of my head. But there's, I know a bunch of different patisseries that make their own styles of macarons that are absolutely delicious. So if you want to go to Paris and go on a hunt for macarons, you can definitely do that. That brings me to a point where I just wanted to clarify and let you guys know the big difference between patisserie and boulangerie, because most of the time, um, one shop will do both nowadays. Boulangerie is basically a bakery, so mostly breads, things that just need, you know, they're a bit more simple, not necessarily sweet, croissants, baguettes. And then finally you have a pâtisserie, which focuses on sweets, cakes, uh, puff pastries. But nowadays in Paris, you can find anything you want in shops that do both. Bye. Eat classic French food in a brasserie or bistro. What are you eating? Oeuf moulet with a pureed uh, vegetable, some sauce, some bacon, and tempura onions. One of the most common questions I usually get when it comes to uh, restaurants in Paris is what is the difference? <laughs> My French accent's totally going out. What's the difference between a bistro, a cafe, a brasserie, or a barbe? Um I think a bistro was originally used when um, Paris was occupied by the Russians sometime in the early 1800s. And there's a word in Russian where you say bistra, which basically means quickly. Um, and that's how the name caught on. Brasserie, on the other hand, is the same word in French as we use for brewery. So basically, um, you would think it's a bit more alcohol-induced or whatnot. A cafe is probably the most simple one. It's exactly what its name states. It's a coffee shop. But a cafe in France is a type of place where you usually find croissant, maybe some charcuteries, some sandwiches at lunch, nothing much. It's usually quite small menus. A brasserie, the main difference between a brasserie and a bistro for me is that a brasserie, most of the time, is open for what they call service continu, which means it's serving food all day, whereas a bistro will have certain times of meals, like they'll only open up for lunch and dinner, whereas a brasserie will run all throughout. The brasserie for me tends to be more traditional nowadays, where you will have um, certain dishes that you know to expect from there, like sausages and mashed potatoes, steak tartare, steak frites, and it's meant for larger groups, faster service, um, and a more casual affair. But obviously in Paris, if you go to places like Brasserie Lip or Au Pied de Cochon, those are quite, not fancy, but they feel a bit more formal. Finally, a bistro. They have taken on so many names nowadays. You have bistros, neo-bistros, for me, the way I look at it is just the name of a restaurant, basically. In Paris, most of the time nowadays is more and more chef-driven. Those are the ones that you call neo-bistros. They're a bit more focused in terms of what type of food they're cooking and the type of produce that they serve up to customers. Nonetheless, it does not mean that you wouldn't be able to find um, really traditional bistros. I hope that helps and that doesn't confuse anyone even more. Par 
Paris is landlocked and obviously it does not have any sea right next to it, but it gets a lot of fresh seafood, so every time you're here, make sure to grab a platter. Always make sure to order some roast chicken at one point during your trip. They're just something about French chicken. Oh my god, it looks, look at the texture. It's really like cheese almost. The color is exquisite. The colors just pop up. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is one of the best I've tried. Try artisanal cheese. Our first one is Brie. Oh, make sure you don't date anyone after eating this. Mm. Very light actually. Not so strong. So our second cheese is Chev Crémeux. It's goat cheese. If you're walking around town on the right areas at the right time, the right day, you'll usually find a lot of open air markets and just grab any fresh fruit that's in season. Right now I'm eating some fresh figs. Figs are so good because they have such a natural sweetness to them and also have like almost like a woody herbal flavor. That's why it pairs perfectly with savory dishes like parma ham, you know, jamon serrano, things like that, or even with cheese. Don't forget to have a drink on terrasse in one of the new bars popping up around the city. Cheers. 8 heures du mat, la rue s'éveille. Elle traîne à la recherche du soleil. At one point, you have to have a coffee on terrasse and people watch, and people judge. C'est un long claque, résonne sur de la soul. Musique dans les oreilles, ignore l'agitation. Le bruit des voitures et le choc des générations. Have wine at a proper wine bar. Finally, one of the last things I love eating in Paris is a beautiful quiche. Right here I have a spinach and chèvre quiche. You can get quiche Lorraine, quiche tomatoes, there's so many different types. Absolutely delicious. Try to get in a run in the morning. You will never run in such a beautiful city. Look at this. Crazy sunrise. I got the Eiffel Tower right behind me. I've got the, I think this is Le Petit Palais here. I've got Les Invalides right here in the 7th district. And then the Champs Elysees on the other side. My tips in terms of where to go running uh, when you're in Paris, I love Butchemont. I love this Pont Alexandre. I love going to Trocadéro. There are other big parks that are absolutely amazing, like the Jardin de Luxembourg. One of the best vantage points in the city is the, uh, what do you call that again? The Sacré-Cœur. If you run up the Sacré-Cœur, absolutely beautiful. You won't regret it.